what up this is your girl megan welcome back to my channel if you're already a subscriber and if this is your first time joining me on today go ahead hit that subscribe button because you know you want to i see my supporters and my uh subscribers were growing and i love it and i just want to say thank you to all of my new subscribers and people who enjoy watching my content i appreciate you i love you and you make it all worth it so without further ado i want to talk about the birth chart of mr warren jeffs now this man is a cult leader or he was a cult leader back in the 90s he was also a pedophile okay a flaming pedophile and i was watching a documentary today on youtube and they were talking about cults and cult leaders and things of that nature. And his name was brought up as they started discussing his cult. Now, just out of curiosity, I decided to look up his birthday and just look up his birth chart, right? And I don't have his birth time, but at, based off of his birthday, I was able to pull up a natal chart for him and what I found was just astonishing. It, it was it was breathtaking. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this motherfucker. Like, I'm just not. <laughs> but I did want to do just a general, very general reading of his chart. Because just for educational purposes, I found it to be really fascinating. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and read this Wikipedia article. Warren Jeffs is a convicted child molester and the president of the Fundamental Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. He is servicing a <laughs> he's serving <laughs> a sentence of life plus 20 years after being convicted in 2011 of two felony counts of child sexual assault. In 2006, he was placed on the FBI's 10 most wanted list for his flight from the charges that he had arranged an illegal marriage between his adult male followers and underage girls in Utah. In 2007, Arizona charged him with eight additional counts in two separate cases, including incest and sexual conduct with minors. Yeah, so he's definitely a piece of shit. Let's start there. Um, and I see that his birthday is December the 3rd, 1955, which makes him a Sagittarius son. And right away, I was like, uh, makes sense. Just because Sagittarius is the natural ruler of the ninth house, which deals with religion. It deals with spirituality. It deals with philosophy, higher minded ideals and things of that nature. Now, when it comes just to Sagittarius or Sagittarius energy in general, you tend to have two types of Sagittarius, two types of Sagittarius is whatever the plural is. <laughs> you have the first type, which is very religious, clearly, clearly Warren. OK, the type who's very, you know, um, they seek to indoctrinate other people or they find a lot of their comfort and understanding about the world through being indoctrinated themselves and then you have the second type which i would personally describe myself as as the more spiritual the more spiritually inclined and free thinking open-minded sagittarius who is very much you know they we don't like to be confined by religions but we at the same time still have our very distinct views and philosophies on the world and we seek to gain understanding about the world around us by way of our own personal spirituality but either way you want to slice it Sagittarius loves to assign meaning to things that's what makes us so you know spiritual or religious in nature that's what makes a lot of people turn to religion in general people want to know why why do i have to die what happens when i die what happened to my uncle when he died why are bad things happening to me how do i get good things to happen to me is there a nigga in the sky who sits on a cloud and hands out blessings all day long you know those type of like philosophical slash religious questions that people have been just pondering over since the beginning of time 
comes naturally to a Sagittarius. And if you're vibrating on a lower frequency or if you're not mentally stable or if you have some other hiccups in your natal chart, you could potentially be the type of person to gravitate towards, you know, doctrination. And this affinity for religion, if you will, is compounded by the fact that his son is conjoined to his Mercury as well as his North Node. Now, Mercury in Sagittarius is a very common placement for preachers. Just simply put, for preachers, uh, public speakers, a lot of motivational speakers, people who make a living off of that preachiness. Sagittarius is known to be very preachy. So as a result, these people can be very, you know, hypocritical. I'll tell you to do one thing while I do another. I sit on my high horse and I tell you what you need to do to get to heaven while I'm out here doing whatever the fuck I want type of energy. Not to say all preachers are that way, but specifically in Warren's case, right? Clearly. And the fact that his Mercury is in the sign of Sagittarius, it just reinforces that. And his Mercury is at the ninth degree. Nine often deals with emotional instability or um, like some type of mental dysfunction. His Mars is in the sign of Scorpio. Now Mars is your passions. It's your sexual drive, right? And Scorpio is the sign of taboo. It's the sign of things that people don't really like to talk about. Hidden urges. This could manifest in somebody having very kinky, kind of perverse sexual interests. Now his moon is conjoined to Uranus in the sign of Leo. Now this stood out because Leo, along with Gemini and Virgo, is the sign of youth. So this can be interpreted as children, young people. And his moon was in square to his Uranus, which pointed out two things. Number one, it pointed out that he's mentally unstable. So it reinforces that. And then it also points towards someone who is radical, right? They live a, a very radical lifestyle or at the very least, they enjoy living a non-conformist lifestyle. And with his Neptune in the 29th degree of Libra, remember that 29th degree brings about a lot of shit because it's the crisis degree, the anoretic degree. And Neptune in the 29th degree, I mean, this is everything from lies, uh, cover up somebody who's really good at uh, misleading people, deceiving people, deception, right? Obviously, you know, he's doing a lot of nefarious shit with people and their children and putting on a front, putting on the air. Uh, these people can be just deluded, deluded and just out of touch with reality. And I mean, I would argue that you would have to be if you call yourself the leader or a part of any type of cult organization. And with his North Node in the sign of Sagittarius and his South Node in the sign of Gemini, this reinforces the fact that this man is manipulative, just straight out. Because a lot of Gemini South Nodes, depending on how evolved they are, can be liars straight up, very manipulative, very witty, very quick minded, that kind of quick minded uh, cunningness that can make somebody very convincing very believable, very manipulative. A lot of Gemini South knows are people who were probably criminals in their previous lifetime. And in this lifetime, there's a karmic duty to be truthful, to be straightforward, to live in your truth. And his Chiron, y'all, remember it, which is the wounded healer, is in the sign of Aquarius which is the sign of homosexuality. And he was actually molesting and raping both boys and girls. So not only is the sign of homosexuality, but Aquarius is the sign of perversions in general. And a lot of times Chiron and Aquarius can produce somebody who is drastically, painfully different. Somebody who takes pride in doing the opposite of what is deemed to be acceptable. And once again, this doesn't apply for every single person 
who's ever been born with Chiron and Aquarius. But looking at the other factors in his chart, these other aspects, these other uh, planetary sign placements, this man fundamentally enjoyed going after children because he felt as if he did not have to fit the regular rules of society. This is a feeling that what's the normal standard doesn't have to apply to you. This could even be Warren even being sexually assaulted or molested as a child, which I mean, typically that's just how things go or just on a pure psychological basis, right? A lot of perpetrators of sexual abuse have been sexually abused at one point or another. And this Chiron is very indicative of that. So I do believe Warren was probably fucked on as a child, his damn self, but it does not excuse him in turn fucking other children. It just doesn't. However, I thought it was very interesting. His Pluto is in the sign of Leo. Remember that sign of youth and it's at the 28th degree. So it's almost at the 29th degree. However, because Pluto represents transformation, it represents dominance, you know, you dominating other people. The fact that it's in the sign of Leo, I thought was very interesting. And when you get closer to that anoretic degree in the, uh, with the planet Pluto, this produces a lot of experiences that this person can't really seem to learn from. Because Pluto, the whole purpose of Pluto is that Pluto wants to transform you. It wants to teach you. I mean, whether it be good or bad, it's based off of what you manifest. But this is somebody who just fundamentally cannot learn from their mistakes. They can't learn from their experiences and they keep doing the same shit over and over again. Oh my God, y'all. His Lilith is in the sign of Sagittarius at the 29th degree. This reinforces that cult like that cult leader mentality. This is somebody who enjoys manipulating other people, somebody who has very strongly held philosophical beliefs, ideals, views, and enjoys manipulating other people based off of that, who enjoys, you know, that preachy like do as I say and not as I do type of mentality. It reinforces the whole concept of him being a pervert just because it's all about I don't have to follow the rules like these these rules, these societal rules don't apply to me. Sagittarius holds on to their own beliefs, whether those be good beliefs or just negative and, and perverse beliefs. And they feel as if they they that's all they have to live by. Right. They feel as if they're exonerated of living to whatever standard that has been set before them. And with this uh, Lilith and Sagittarius at the 29th, it, this shows that Warren did this. He used his religion to justify this. He used his, his religion to justify his thinking and his philosophical ideals to justify whatever the fuck came into his head. And his asteroid Cirrus is in the sign of Aquarius. And this asteroid Cirrus or Cirrus, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but this asteroid represents children. And the fact that it's in the sign of perversion and homosexuality, y'all go ahead and put that together on your own. Now, getting into his aspects really quick, I'm not going to do all of them. I'm just going to go through a few that are the most telling. His Mars makes a square to his asteroid series. Remember, his Mars is in the sign of Scorpio, which is sex taboo things unhidden or excuse me things that are hidden <laughs> things that are unseen rather and Ceres in the sign of Aquarius which is the children asteroid in the sign of perversion and homosexuality so this just really points towards him being a pervert which points towards him having a fetish for children his Neptune is in sextile to his Lilith. So this points towards him successfully misleading people, successfully lying, successfully uh, just deceiving, deceiving people based off of religion. 
based off of this premise that he's this God appointed fucking deacon or cult leader or whatever the fuck he is leading people astray. His Neptune is in square to his asteroid Sirius, which reinforces him being a pervert. It reinforces him successfully being able to conceal the fact that he was having sex with children for as long as he was. His Pluto is in square to his Saturn, which points towards him being a control freak. Very controlling, which a lot of times, I mean, that's the whole premise of a cult is to manipulate and control people. That Neptune at the 29th degree in square to his Chiron in Aquarius reinforces him being a pervert. <laughs> like literally it's all over his chart, y'all. When I saw this, I was like, oh my God. Like there are literal aspects and indicators left and right. This man was born sick. He just was. Now I see his series is in square to his Chiron also in Aquarius, once again, reinforces the whole theme of him being a perv, of um, him being a sexual deviant, somebody who has very alternative um, interests. And I'd also say that this Neptune square series here could also indicate him being prosecuted for these crimes because remember his Neptune is in the sign of Libra and Libra deals with the justice system. Warren's son conjoined to his asteroid Juno deals with him feeling like he can only date people who he can lead spiritually or who he can lead religiously. So yeah, like I said, I'm not about to dive too deep into this. He's not worth my time or my energy, but I just found a lot of these placements to be very just uncanny almost. So with that being said, drop down in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys thought about this birth chart reading. Let me know if you have any suggestions on even a celebrity or someone who I could do next. And with that being said, make sure you practice unconditional self-love so that you can love others. And until next time, aha!